So I'm a little bit sad. This is the longest running tank in the whole studio. It's been nearly a year now, but it's definitely time. used to be set up as a peninsula aquarium, meaning I could walk all the way around it. And since I switched it up, I can't get to the back section anymore. There's a ton of hardscape in the way, and it's just, it's way too overgrown. There's not enough room for the fish. I want to create something a little bit more contemporary style with lots and lots of swim space. And I'm going to have to work one thing out first, and that is where to put this huge peace lily that's growing at the top. I mean, there's absolutely no way I'm getting rid of this bad boy. It's so healthy. Maybe I can switch it over to the aquarium next to it and then put it back when the setup's complete. Yeah, I definitely want it as a feature in the new tank, that's for sure. The problem we got, right, <laughs> is that it's so well rooted, this whole plant, the root system has entangled itself all around the main hardscape. So every time I try and pick it up, the massive piece of wood that's underneath it is coming up as well. So I think I'm gonna have to get in there with the scissors and snip around it and sort of start the root system again, but not because I'm not, you know, there'll still be some there. So that can go in the water and we should be fine then. Okay, this is quite interesting actually. The reason it's so well sort of bound in is because I put these ferns in as well and they've like made this complete matted root that's just locked everything down. So I'm having to cut all around that to try and get the piece of leaves out. Well worth the effort, but it, yeah, it is a lot of effort. So today's video is proudly sponsored by API and Aquarian. Now throughout the video, I'm gonna be using a lot of these products. I'll explain them in more detail as we go. But in a minute, we're gonna be doing the substrate system and that's where the root tabs always come into play. Absolutely love these. You guys know I've been using these. I've been using all these products for years and years now. I was using them before they even sponsored the videos. So you know I love them. And as you can see, the fish are super healthy. All I feed them is the Aquarian food. We've got the flake that I give, for instance, to the rainbow fish. And then we've got the sinking pellets. I use them for like the quarries, but to be honest, the rainbows like to have a go on them as well. And then for the bristle nose, I always use the wafers as well. They eat these so fast. Bristle nose can be a little bit shy sometimes, but you get some of these in the water and they're right at the front, so you can have a good look at them. But for now, back to the video. So it's out, and for the time being, I'm gonna try and lock it somewhere. There's a good spot, here's a good spot. Locking it over this side of this aquarium. That'll keep the root systems moist. And hopefully stand it up as well. The wood in the top is kind of sprung, so that should, there we go. Actually looks great there. <laughs> Can't see the fish wall though, can you? Look at the devastation that we've left behind. <laughs> Not to worry, I still wanna save a lot of the plants as well from this tank. So I wanna take off a lot of the really healthy hydrocotyl Japan that we've got spreading. I definitely want this Monte Carlo and Boosies that are sort of dotted throughout. And I'm gonna be using a lot of the dwarf sag in my fish wall because I'm setting up a ton of ecosystem tanks in there as well. So yeah, barely anything is gonna be going to waste. I mean, I've had occasions where that's had to happen, like on my pearlweed aquarium, just because there's so much of it, but these are so healthy. The whole tank is completely healthy. There's just not enough space. So, you know, we've got to change it up, fish first, you know? Now it's time to remove everything from the aquarium and the water will go murky. Now don't worry, I've had people before say, oh, it's gonna, you know, bad for the fish. It won't be bad for the fish at all. You should see some of the rivers these guys are from. Like very, very murky. So yeah, not they'll be fine, but I do need to get everything out to be able to catch them. Otherwise it's gonna be impossible. I do need to bring the water level down as well because they are so fast. And then that way I can put them into one area and scoop them out. Thank you. 
so we've got the tank drain and I've covered up the inlet with the net you can see there so no fish can go up the pipe because it's quite wide and just look at the hoard I have got of all that uh, not so dwarf Sagittaria. There's so much in here. And also I managed to pick out a really beautiful looking Echinodorus. And I'm gonna put that in my eight foot nature aquarium I've got here. I think it will look beautiful. I've currently got these Echinodorus down here that you can see. They're very vibrant and green, so it'd be nice to have like a, a different tone next to it or near it. I'm thinking right here would be a really good spot as well because it does merge into some more sort of orangey red tones and that's, it's a red style um, Echinodorus as well. Yeah, I'm not completely sure about that there at the moment. At least I can put it in and it will keep growing nicely. It might sort of unfurl and look a bit better. Not sure it actually goes yet, but yeah, we'll see. Just leave it and if, if, if it's not working, I can take it out. Right, so the tank is cleared up nicely. Well, enough anyway for me to be able to get the fish out. As you can hopefully see that it's so bright and sunny, the sun is like beaming in. It's a really nice day. You can't see anything there, can you? But yeah, I've currently got quite a few tanks on the fish wall that are empty. I've just stirred all of that up, trying to catch out one of the fish that I left in there for the eight foot. So that's empty. We've got an empty one there. We've got an empty one there. And we've got three empty ones on the end as well. Which means I can put Corys in one. Um, I can put a few rainbow fish in the other because there's quite a lot in here. Uh, I don't think they can all go in one tank. So we can spread them about, but catch them all afterwards and put them in the new tank once it's done. And then I could take out the rest of the water, collect up all the substrate and save it for another scape. If you guys ever have old substrate, just save it. I like to put it underneath sand, cap it over the top and it'll work brilliant again. cleaned up ready to go now hardscaping first so decoration hardscapes a, a fancy way of saying decoration we're gonna put that in first now remember the idea with this scape is lots of swim room so I'm gonna try and keep it sort of open in most places it's gonna look pretty basic to start with but once we've got in um, some plants and stuff everything on there it's really gonna to come to life then and I've got all of this wood to choose from plus all of the wood down here and all these rocks as well. So there is plenty of choice. So sort of started with two islands there. All of this could change, but you've got to start somewhere, right? And I could link the two of them now of the wood and then build up more rocks around them where I think it's needed, how I think it looks nice, really. For me, this is why getting the right pieces of hardscape makes such a difference. That's just three pieces of wood. I made sure they were oversized when I selected them. And look at that, we've got like, it looks like it's moving even though it's, or it looks like there should have been water running through it. That's, that's my opinion anyway. But we've still got tons of gaps all around the tank and it looks fantastic. Cannot wait to get some details on. But first of all, we need to glue the whole thing down or it's gonna float. And for that, I use paper towel break off little bits, put it in small gaps, and then put in cyanoacrylate superglue. Not the gel form, the liquid, it seeps into the paper 
and just goes like even more rock, completely solid for a long time as well. Now I'm not going heavy on the plants in the foreground area of this tank, so we don't need a substrate system that's coming right up to the front glass. But I do want plants in all the background area, right at the back really, just creating like a sort of curtain of plants. So we'll need some nutrients in that back section. And I saved the substrate from this tank, so we've got loads of it to use. Gonna get that in and add some new root tabs to it as well, just to rejuvenate it a bit more. Now, although that substrate system seemed to be working well before the plants were going crazy, after a year, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be sort of nearing the end of its nutrients. So we definitely need to bump up that nutrient level in the deep part of the substrate where the plants can be sending their roots. So we can go to the API shrine, um, root tabs. There we go, that one's open, that's perfect. What have we got free in there? That probably is enough for that little area that we need but these things are so good. They contain iron and potassium and just, yeah, you've put these in, you're absolutely sorted. They're really good as well for like tanks you've already got running, just stick them deep into the substrate and it'll get the plants going really, really good again. And when we've got a new tank like this, I find it's really useful to just push the uh, tabs into a pestle and mortar, grind them up, and then you can just sprinkle it all over the top. And we can now cap over the top of this with a decorative sand. You can use whatever color you want, you know, any sort of grain size is up to you. I prefer to go with a more sort of finer sand or medium to coarse sand. Gravels tend to allow nutrients to be able to sort of sift through them coming out in the water column and that's not what we want. So we've now got options. I can either keep the sand completely clean like that, which personally isn't one of my favorite looks, but I also don't want to put in a ton of detail gravel either, because I think that's going to lose the sort of clean effect that I'm going for once all the plants are in. So instead I've got some smaller pebbles. Yeah, you can see down here, look, amongst all the other stuff, there's smaller pebbles. I think they'll actually look really good. Add to the skate rather than taking away. So I'll give them a try. If they don't work, I can just take them out. There we go, I think that's just given us a little bit more interest. Now I know that's not gonna be to everyone's taste, but I really like the different color pops you're getting from it, the pinks in there, the lighter and darker grays, 
a little bit of reddy orange as well. I think it spices it up a little bit and I like it. That's what this part's all about, by the way, guys. If you like it, do it. You might not have seen what you're trying done before. Like I don't often see people doing what I've done there, but I don't know, I can see it. I can see it in nature. Do you know what I mean? Because let's face it, not all stones in nature are all like perfectly matching colors and things like that. There's, especially in rivers where loads of stuff over all the years has just been pulled down. It's like more like a complete mix. So the next stage is upon us. It's time to start planting. I want to start on the wood. I want to sort of fill that out first and then I'll probably fill it up put the filters on and then start planting stems or whatever I want in that background section. I'm not entirely sure yet. But when attaching to hardscape, for this instance, I'm gonna keep the ferns down low because if you get too close to the lighting, that's when algae can form on them and they can start to go a little bit rough as well. So, I mean, this middle section here, without covering it up too much, is just cooling out for a nice big sort of featurey fern. Sort of like try and keep that back area um, not covered, but like looking like it's part of the edge of the stream or something and then get more sparse as we come out. So in this tank here is where I have all the plants that I'm going to be using for the project. We have loads of ferns and loads of booses. I've also got a ton of Anubiuses, Anubii, Anubus. <laughs> What's the plural of Anubius? Um, yeah, I've got booses and things in there as well. And I might want to use just a little bit of the dwarf sage for that background area, I'm not sure yet. And then I've got loads more Anubis in this tank as well. And for those of you that are new here and don't realize you do have to prep the plants first. So all of my plants are from Aquafleur. They just look so good, don't they? So you've got to take them out of the pot. Oh, this one's perfect, yes. See that? So that's, they're in this like nutrient woolly stuff. So that's what they grow in. And for ferns, you can just take them off the top like that, perfect. So that plant is ready to go. I just got to do that to all of them. Right, that's definitely enough for now. I might add little tweaks and little pieces later on, but I think I'm gonna add the dwarf sage. I'm gonna make a curtain in the back section uh, because it's already quite long, so it's gonna look a little bit like Valsneria, a plant that I do actually struggle with, uh, but I don't struggle with the dwarf sage. So I'm gonna pick a plant that's suitable for my water because everyone's water's chemistry is slightly different. Some plants do better than others. So I'm gonna go with it, but this time any runners that come to the front I'm just gonna pull them out and just trim them out. It should be easy because we've got such a thin layer here. In the previous tank, it was deep, which meant that the roots were bedded right in and pulling them out just made a mess. Whereas in this instance, you can see the runners come in, they'll sit on the top of the sand more than anything, just quickly snip it off. So it'll be a lot more manageable. And yeah, I think, I think that'll actually add a really nice sort of curtain in the background, but we can still keep the whole foreground nice and clear as well. So I've separated the dwarf sage out. We've got the longest pieces there more sort of short ones there, and then there's a ton of other short ones as well. So I can sort of grade it. I mean, it'll, it'll grow, don't get me wrong, but to start with, it will look a little bit better than just random.
that's really difficult now to see what's going on without any water being in it because obviously the plants will lift up some flow will be going and the filters on as well so gonna get the water in gonna get the filter flow in and we can see where we're at properly might need to add more might not who knows it's taking everything in me not just to put a little bit of scatter gravel around these though which I still might do <laughs> So in case anyone is wondering how this thing works, this is just like part of a filter inlet. I just attached a little valve to it here and the hose runs over to this reel. And then from the reel, it goes into this water butt. And then when I'm filling the water butt up with water from the tap, I use Acro Essential in it. It basically removes chlorine, chloramines and heavy metals. And if you use it in a higher concentration, it can actually detoxify ammonia, nitrite and nitrate as well. Now, obviously we don't need to be doing that because we've just set the whole thing up. But just one cap full in this whole water butt just treats the whole thing and makes tap water completely safe. So you get a lot for your money. This bottle will last me a long time, to be honest. So the water is filled up. We are now ready to turn the filter on. Now, remember this filter has been running for a long time. It's all mature, so we can just switch it on. Probably gonna kick up a little bit muck to start with but that's not a problem and the filter i'm using is the oase biomaster 850 uh, it's a pretty big unit to be fair but rainbow fish are pretty big so they need good filtration Now the water is pretty murky. I mean, it's gonna be, I didn't even wash the sand. But for that, we've got AccuClear. So, so good this stuff is. You only need a tiny little amount of it. It binds together all those dust particles in the water column and the filter takes them out and captures them inside the unit. Within like a couple of hours, this will just be like, like gin. So it's now the next day, the tank is crystal clear. It actually cleared up like before I even left, but I just ran out of time. At the end of the day, all the lights went off anyway, but yeah, it's looking really good. Now, obviously we've got a lot of epiphyte plants in the tank, which is plants that attach to decor, which means they're not in any sort of substrate and there's no nutrients from currently. Obviously it's brand new water in there. So we need to add some leaf zone to the tank so that they can instantly have some nutrients and they'll be able to keep growing then, especially with this good lighting we've got. And I shall now be handed it Oh, my lovely assistant. <laughs> oh, fresh bottle as well. Shake it up in case there's any sediment. Oh, I've just, I didn't shut the lid. It's leaked everywhere. <laughs> okay, so for a tank this size, I'm gonna go with a couple of caps. There's a lot of plants in it to be fair. I'm gonna go three, two and a half, two and a half, and then a little bit for life. <laughs> <laughs> and before we put the fish in, I need to test the water with my master test kit. Now, obviously I set up a lot of tanks and I've done this lots of times. I'm not expecting there to be any issues at all, but if I don't test, I don't know. Like the, I don't know, using that old substrate could have released something into the water column. Again, I'm not expecting it to, but you, you can't really take the chance, can you? You're putting live animals in something. An assumption that everything's okay is, is not good enough. So just test the water. There we go, testing done. Now, no ammonia as suspected, no nitrite. Nitrate is sitting at about five ppm, maybe a little bit higher, which isn't really high enough for a planted tank in my opinion, but it's a brand new one. It will gain more nitrate as time goes by. I like to have it sitting more in the uh, 20, 20 plus range, 10 to 20, something like that. But it will get there, it just needs time to mature. Now, obviously when we add fish, their waste is gonna bring up the nitrate as well. And speaking of fish, we can now put them in. Looking good this side. Uh, <laughs> I think the bristle nose has just gone and teared everything up in there. So it's all gone a bit sort of dusted and misty, but fish are fine. I was gonna get some more, but looking at it, I think there's plenty of fish there. They're gonna really enjoy that. And for this type of tank, more is not necessarily better. all 
all the fish are collected up, quite chilled, um, let's put them in. Right, I've got all the fish, including two coolie loaches. I'm not gonna hang about here, I'm just gonna put them in. <laughs> Come on in, guys, whoa. Is that everyone? No, nope, there's so many. There we go. There's one Cory, but it's a spined one, so I don't want to get stung. There we go. And a snail. Right, so now that the fish are in, I'm going to add in some quick start. Now, obviously, I've got a cycled uh, filter already, but it's brand new. I always do it just as a security measure, but I also use it on startup as well. If I've got a brand new filter, it works really well. It's absolutely brilliant stuff. It's basically just like, it's beneficial bacteria in a bottle that then you add to the tank and then it colonizes over everything. Given the amount of waste in the tank, it sort of gets to that level because it's a food source and then you're perfect. I've been using this for years and years now, way before I was even sponsored by API. So that's why it was kind of brilliant when I, when I did team up with them because I was using all their stuff anyway. But yeah, don't tell them that. Oh no, they're watching this. Anyway, follow the uh, instructions on the back of the bottle. For this one, it says I need like five capfuls. And there we go, that should keep our fish nice and safe. And one of the awesome things about moving them straight from the uh, fish ball into the tank is that the colors, they, they just don't go. So you've instantly got great colors. The Corys look amazing on that clean substrate, don't they? They'll enjoy that as well. It's a bit softer on their barbs. They don't have to sift through as, as much harder stuff. They can go on gravels. I mean, obviously in the wild, they're going to encounter some gravels in some of the streams and things. They're all coming around here now. Obviously we've got the uh, Siamese algae to there as well, flying fox, so that'll help with any sort of thread algae that we get anywhere. This blue here is very blue, looking gorgeous. And then Madagascan, he's one of the bosses of the tank, even though it's not the biggest. And then we've got the little Venezuelan quarries as well. We've got about four or five of the uh, skunk quarries, and there's one of them now. And I think there was about five of the Venezuelans as well. And there's the absolute boss Bosmani one. Colouring on it's insane. And there's the uh, subdominant there. Right, it's been 10 minutes or so. Now they're getting brave. Look, they're all over the tank. There's so much room for them in this tank, way more than before. And obviously we've got the longer plants in the background, but they can still easily just go and swim through that. It's not like it's inhibiting their swimming at all. They'll actually enjoy that. I mean, obviously they're not doing it right this second as I'm filming, <laughs> but I'm sure they will. Mm -hmm. 